Hey, Pete here for Studio Live today. Now, in this, the first bonus video, as part of my series where I'm recording an entire song in GarageBand on the iPad using just four tracks, today I wanted to master my final mix, and I won't actually be mastering it on the iPad. I'm gonna be using a digital audio workstation on my PC called Reaper to do the final master of this song. Let's go. So first of all, let's cover off a couple of obvious questions that you may have. Number one is, what is a master and why do we do it? Well, mastering is the process of taking our final mixed track and just adding a few final touches. So these usually involve things like EQ, equalization, compression, limiting, and just some other small things that are gonna sweeten our mix and make it what we call radio ready, which means it's gonna be able to compete with other tracks that have been mastered at that same sort of level and with those same sort of things in mind. The second question you may have is, why am I not doing this in GarageBand or in an iOS application? And the short answer to that is that I just simply haven't found a way to do that that gets me satisfactory results within iOS. So when I do find a way to do that, I'll definitely start mastering in iOS, so let's do that right now. I'm gonna open up the Reaper DAW and I've just got a track set up here. And what I'm gonna do is bring in my final full resolution file that I finished in GarageBand and pull this into the DAW here now. Now I'm not gonna go through the details of how to do that, but I have a video which shows you how to use iTunes file sharing to actually copy that final version from an iPad or an iPhone or an iOS device across to your PC. So check that out in the link up there or in the description down below if you need to know how to get your file onto the PC. But let's assume that you have your AIF file on the PC, which I have here now. All what we need to do is just simply drag this over into Reaper and there is our AIF file. The first thing I'm gonna do is that you might recall I had these two bars of lead in at the very start of the track. So I'm just going to reduce some of that. We don't want that much time. We don't want it to be right up against here because you want a little tiny bit of lead in there. You don't want it to start straight away because some players will fade in or cut off the very start if we have it too close. But I'm going to cut there and then just delete this section. By the way, if you'd like to learn more about using Reaper, highly recommend reaperblog.net, which is a great resource. I'll put a link to that down in the description below if you wanna learn how to use Reaper to not only master, but also to record and mix your tracks. So we've done that very small edit and we have our song here. And if I hit play, you hear the very familiar sound of the song that we've been recording over the last six videos. So what I wanna do with this track is a couple of very small moves to do the final master. So if we go and click on the FX button here, you can see that I already have these set up. And what I've got here is one EQ, so an equalizer, which is a parametric EQ, and I've got a master limiter as well, and that is it. And I do very light mastering because I'm 99% happy with the results I get out of GarageBand. All I really wanna do here is just to make sure that this final mastered version is going to sit nicely with other tracks that are mastered as well. So in terms of the EQ, you can see here that there are only three moves. We've got one low shelf down here at about 45 uh, hertz. And all that's doing is cutting off any of those low rumbling sounds. I live on a reasonably busy street, so we get buses and trucks and other things coming up and down the street. So I don't want any of those low rumbly sounds to be in my recording. I also do two small cuts here. So we've got one cut at about 270 hertz of less than one dB and another cut at 500 hertz, again, just over one dB there. And all that's doing is just taking down the volume of some of those lower frequencies. So in this particular track, I was finding there was a bit of a buildup when I was listening back on my monitor speakers. I found that there was a little bit of buildup around those frequencies. So I've just pulled those down a little tiny bit. And the final EQ move I've done here is to enhance or to lift the frequency just at around about five kilohertz. And that's again, 
that high shelf has only gone up by just under 1 dB. So you can see very small moves there, nothing drastic. We're not changing the sound, we're just enhancing and making sure it's gonna sit nicely. The only other thing that I do when I'm mastering traditionally, and yes, you can do a whole lot more than this, but I wanted to keep this really simple, is to put a master limiter. So I just use, again, the default limiter that comes with Reaper. I set the threshold here just by listening back and working out where it needs to go. At the moment, it's at minus uh, 4.3, and then I've pretty much left every other setting at a default value, including the limit, which is at minus 0.1 dB. So what the limiter is going to do is it's going to bring that overall volume of the track from where it is at the moment, which is about minus 4 dB, up to right up to almost zero. So almost the point where it's going to clip, but we obviously don't want it to clip and go over and get distortion. We want it to sit just under there. So now that we've done those moves, we will close out of there and I'll find a section of the song around here, around the chorus, and I'm gonna play it back and I will turn on these effects. So you can see it's red at the moment. When I turn on the effects, it's gonna go green and you'll be able to hear the difference between the two sounds. My heart is racing and I'm scared And I take a breath and try to see So there you go, in my opinion at least, uh, the sound you're getting with that master version or with the effects on there, it's a little bit more present. Obviously it's got the volume there, but those small EQ tweaks is just sort of give it that tiny little bit of treble boost. It's just sweet at the top end. And obviously cutting out some of those lower frequencies has just removed some of that uh, build up that we had down there. So for me, that is it. And I'm now done with the mastering process. I'm now going to render this file out, which means to create a new WAV file out of this. So I'm going to just select, and I'll select a little bit more of the lead out there. And I'm going to go to file and render. And you can see I've already done this process. We've got it set up for a 24-bit WAV file, which just means we're gonna get a full resolution, high resolution file, nothing compressed. And then if I hit render, you can see there that the waveform now is a little bit higher. So we can see the volumes come up there and it's not sort of a sausage, which is sort of the, the typical thing we see if you've over compressed or over limited where all of the peaks are right up the top. We've still got some of that nice dynamic range and some of that variation that gives this track the, the nice flow. So we want the, we do want the quiet soft sections to be a bit more quiet and soft. And we want the, the chorus and, and the parts where we want it to really kick in to have that extra impact. So that's what this mastering process has done. If we close out of that now, and we go back to our file, we can see that we've now got our master wave file. And this is our finished product. This is the wave file that we can now use to uh, distribute, to use with videos, to upload to services. And this is going to be our final version of the song, which is a good segue into the second bonus video, which is available right now, once again, click up here, or you can check out the description down below. What I'll be doing in the second bonus video is showing you how I actually distribute my music. So I use a service called DistroKid, which is a, a very affordable and very simple way of getting your music out to iTunes, Apple Music, to Spotify, to Google Play, to all of the main streaming and digital platforms. So hang around for that, jump into the next video if you're keen to find out how I distribute this song and I'll be doing that live here in the next video in just a few moments.